Well, hi there. I'm Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist. Born male became female. My guest is transgender activist Ms. Mariah Lopez, who is here. You may have seen her recently on the show. Well, she's back because Trump has won and we have lost. Oh dear. We are going to discuss the Trump administration's take on the LGBTQ community, especially as it regards the T part. That would be us. Uh, what are we going to do? And what's worse, what is he going to do to us? Hmm. We'll have to talk about this. My guest, Ms. Mariah Lopez. Hey, Diana. So, thanks for having me back. That's number one. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, so, I don't know if the date of today's uh, taping will come with the show, but today um, is about a week out from when the Trump administration announced rollbacks under Title IX protection for transgender students. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Obama administration had previously set a historic precedent by issuing a legal opinion or directive to states which directed them to assume that for the purposes of anti-discrimination, mm -hmm. transgender people were covered, especially students, yes. uh, under Title IX. And within the last week, the Department of Justice, via Jeff Sessions, has decided to issue a rollback directive, which is sort of unique and unprecedented, and is asking the states to disregard uh, an opinion, which is in, in itself unprecedented. However, the night before tonight's taping, well, we are sessions. Let me just tell people when we're shooting, we are shooting on March third, twenty seventeen. Hopefully, by the time this is shown, Jeff Sessions will be out of office or in prison. Because, like I was gonna explain to everyone last night, Jeff Sessions recused himself from any investigations or taking part or supervising any investigations out of the Justice Department of the Trump administration and any of their connections to Russia or communication with Russia before mm -hmm. he was uh, inaugurated. So what we... And he lied. He told a big fat fib. He did tell a big fat fib to Congress when asked specifically about contact with Russia uh, beforehand. What has changed um, and come to my attention before or since the last show is that Jeff Sessions desired pick for the Department of Justice Civil Rights Bureau is an attorney named John Gore. And John Gore was the uh, a key proponent. Uh, he's an attorney out of North Carolina, and he was a key proponent of the anti-trans bathroom legislation. He worked at a private firm out of North Carolina until being considered to run the Civil Rights Bureau of the Department of Justice. So we have this anti-trans bigot picked by this racist I was going to say, yeah. But I think um, there's a little bit of universal karma karma playing out uh, both in the press and in real life and in real time and what's happening. We see Jeff Sessions' credibility crumbling literally as the second progresses, as the minute progresses. And I think last week we were discussing trans kids and trans students and, those, and their protections and how Jeff Sessions specifically was coming after them. In my most optimistic view, I will hope that Jeff Sessions or his Justice Department will become neutralized as a threat to trans By kids. the time this is shown, let's hope Jeff Sessions has resigned, has been fired. Now, there Donald Trump is always Congress saying you're people. fired. Now's the time to say it. Well, there are multiple Congress people actually now calling for him to be fired for blatantly appearing to have lied or misled or omitted information when he was asked about his connections to Russia. And with because Congress. he has a very uh, Southern accent, he pulls that. Who me? Charming. Yeah. Well, I, I. Oh, gee, did I do that? Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't mean that. Yeah. I didn't mean that at all. So, um, what has also come out in the last 24 hours is that Jeff Sessions was under investigation by the FBI at the time of for what? 
for communications with Russia. Oh yeah, but so that's what a big, else is new? Well, but, but that's a huge deal. So um, I thought you meant like kitty porn or something. Yeah, why not? Well, well, well. Believe it or not, and and we're ranking offenses: communication with Russia to collude to undermine. I believe Obama's. they call it treason. Yeah. There you go. Collusion, treason. That's a pretty big deal. Kitty porn, treason. Kitty porn, treason. Any, mini, miny, mo. Any, mo. Yeah. Anyway, uh. How about kitty porn that's also treason because they're Russian kids? Exactly. There you go. There you go. But uh, no, Did we I can. Yep. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. What can you do when faced with Trump? You laugh or you cry. <laughs> Boo hoo. So I, I opt to laugh. Ha 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 ha. Nervous laughter here. But anyway, um, now. We're pretty strong, both you and I. Now you've been changing laws since you were what, sixteen? Well, 15, 16. Yeah. And uh, forget going to the prom. She did something even more interesting. It, as, tr as Trump likes to, to call people, I was a winner. He yes. likes winners. Well, I'm a winner. Um, and you're a 10, which he would love. Thank you. Oh, I, I think he'd, he'd find fault with my Native American nose or my, my, my wonderfully pudgy double chin. However, Trump himself is like a 2. Oh, please. Trump, I'm no, just, a minus I'm 2. I'm being a great feminist. I don't give a crap. As you, a, a Latina, yes. all this works. I'm, I'm totally confident. However, tr I'm, I'm sure Trump could look at any woman. I think it was Giselle Bundchen he said wasn't a 10. No, it was uh, Heidi it? Klum or someone. Oh, Heidi or, Klum, Heidi Klum. So he said, well, she's no longer a 10. Well, he was born a minus 13, exactly, so who cares? Exactly. Um, you know, yeah. all those women who married him, his money had nothing to do with it. It was his looks and his wonderful personality. His money had absolutely nothing to do with it. And all those pornographic photographs of Melania coming out, obviously they are just computer Doctored. generated. Yes, she actually thought of becoming a nun, but she lay down until the thought passed, and then you know. And I and I was also it. born, um, you know, Queen of Sheba, twelve shades darker. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, I think it's important for trans people throughout the country to use this year specifically because the Trump administration chose to attack us to focus on trans children. Last That's so cowardly and petty. It, it is, but, but ironically, you and I know each other because I was once a trans child in yes. the position of many of the trans kids he is trying to attack. And so we're fighters. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have used strategies myself and helped others use legal strategies to overcome some of the obstacles he is looking to put in their way. I also believe that young people being able to connect their stories mm -hmm. to leaders that aren't far removed as Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Marcia, Rivera. Yeah. I mean, there there are leaders or, or examples in their generation. Of you know, excuse me, I was thinking earlier today, no disrespect to Sylvia Rivera, whom I knew and loved, and she was wonderful to me. But I think you're maybe, and I'm not flattering you, the best activist who ever lived. And I'll explain why. You start. You started at fifteen. Come on, at fifteen. Th Thirteen, but you met me at fifteen. Right, and like, poor on, Sylvia on, did not okay. start until she was like, well, she was 18. like, eighteen. It's not her fault. No, that's true, but I mean, you've actually changed laws, whereas Sylvia, on her deathbed, was desperate to She's change trying. the law. Yeah, and the so creeps from Espa, Espa. <coughs> were hectoring her as she lay dying. She wanted trans inclusion in the gay rights bill, and they wouldn't give it to her. And she's dying of cancer. So on the sexual of. orientation, not discrimination. In 2002, at the age of 50. Poor woman. In St. Vincent's, which no longer exists. Thank you, Chris Quinn. Uh, <coughs> and Deborah Glick, let's not forget. Oh, Deborah Glick, thank you, Chris yes. Quinn. Can I? Yes. Oh, let me. Do it. Chris Quinn. So I just want to point out something to everyone, because <coughs> I have Excuse been me. around... Uh, attorneys and lawyers since I was young. I believe that Chris Quinn, um, Kleenex please, my love. Yes, you want one? Yes. I believe Chris Quinn violated certain ethic lo ethics laws. Starting the day she was born. Yes. But specifically in New York State, I'm sure this is awful for, for the camera. In New York State, when she was the city <coughs> speaker, and <coughs> when- I always thought Gifford Miller was a lot prettier than she was. Ah. So when she was speaker, <coughs> Christine Quinn used public taxpayer resources via her staff to push 
a state legislation legislative issue. Follow me. So she was the public. She was the speaker of New York City Council, and while I was trying to get her, thank you, to address trans issues like local law three, like making sure uh, trans people received uh, adequate hearings at the uh, d um, uh, at the Human Rights Commission. So I couldn't get her help on on Dick. And well, she's a dyke. How could you? But okay. And yeah. suddenly, and suddenly, I look up and she is pushing via the resources of her office the state gay marriage law with Cuomo. Now here's the catch, though. Kumbaya, it being amazing and it being so close to pride is one thing. And yes, you're gay, and and you obviously are a figurehead in the movement as well as a legislator. But if you benefit financially, Christine Quinn, from a state law passed in the state legislator because you are more wealthy than most lesbians in New York. Than most people in New York. It's a gay, gay bill. So now this gay state bill around marriage makes marriage of gay women in New York State legal and you used taxpayer money in the office of the speaker to help advance this, then there may be a conflict of interest that the city's conflict of interest board never picked up. Now I'm 31 now. This must have occurred over five years ago. However, I don't know the statute technically on uh, uh, certain ethical violations or even if Christine Quinn broke the law. I do know that she spent a lot of time in city council as speaker, not doing all that she could do for the trans community. And it does come down to money to a certain extent, besides the conflict of interest in her own regard. Let me tell you what she did to me. In the she year 2000... Wait. I know, I know, I know. Go ahead, I know. Go ahead. You know what I'm going to say? Go ahead. Let, tell, tell the people. Okay. In the year 2000, <laughs> I was going to be the first trans person on a community board, community board eight. She told Gifford Miller, no, I want Melissa Sklars to be the first person. And I love Melissa. It so was Melissa right. was the first person community board, too. But, and Gifford Miller was at that time my city council member. And a hell of a lot prettier than Chris Quinn could ever hope to be. But um, Chris Quinn is really a kind of bully. dirty fighter, back bully. deal, dirty deal kind of lady. Bully. Bully. In my, yeah, in my experience. You want to sue me, Chris? You go fucking right ahead, girl. Well, she could go for it. If she sued Diana, what's she gonna sue for me for? If she sued Diana, well, the lights. I I'd have to get an investigation started by the state attorney general into whether or not she abused her office by at, in the city as speaker by using city staff. I did not say slush fund to to push a state legislative issue. I mean, here's the deal in in simple terms: Christine Quinn and her wife or spouse own a certain amount of. Property they own a fucking or, townhouse and a country house and all sorts. And certainly, even though the law in New York for gay marriage was about equality, it also had certain financial benefits for those in a higher tax bracket. So Christine Quinn should have had the wherewithal and legal forethought to say, I'm using some of my staff, which are city taxpayer employees, to push a state legislative issue. Yes, I'm gay and I'm interested in this, but it, it, it will technically help line my pocket or, or lower my taxes or change my finances in any way for the better. That was inappropriate. Well, she wants to run for mayor. So Chris Quinn, understand that when you attempt to run for mayor, me and my humble beginnings with my arrest for pros and maybe not looking good on paper as you, will absolutely come for you, girl. I will make sure <laughs> that 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 if I have to explain it as slow and calm as I'm doing here, every New Yorker, via the constant interviews I will do with local print press, everyone will read how I believe, based on my legal forethought, being a legal savant and winning the cases I've yes, won. Yes. I believe my opinion is that you could have potentially broke the law. And all that will do is start an investigation that will hang over your campaign the rest of the time you or Cuomo. Which she will blame on sexism. She'll say, 
from the train. They want, yeah, they want, yeah, they want to put me in jail because they're sexist. No, I want to put you in jail because the entire time you were in charge of most of the money and purse, purse strings around HIV, AIDS, and GLBTQ rights issues via controlling the human rights campaign, you did not use these funds efficiently. The numbers of trans women being infected with HIV, AIDS in New York spiked while you were speaker, especially trans women of color. Uh, you helped lay the groundwork, Chris. Quinn for bringing PrEP into our city and helping Chris Cuomo lay the groundwork in Albany uh, with Gilead and the gay community and bringing everyone together to make this wicked, evil, unethical deal behind the scenes to lower the cost of, of Truvada for Medicaid patients and to start the process of getting millions of dollars in free advertisement for Gilead. If you look all over the city right now, it is unprecedented that a pharmaceutical company has free taxpayer funded branding and advertisement all over the city. I've never seen the Department of Health push a specific drug so aggressively when it is so clear that them doing so lines the pockets of one specific drug maker. So Gilead Pharmaceuticals has the deal up in Albany with Cuomo. Charles King and them seem to believe that PrEP is the best thing since sliced bread and they're giving PrEP out like candy. They won't house at-risk negatives, but they'll give negatives as many Truvada as they want, as expensive as it is, and no one is supposed to believe that Gilead isn't giving money to maybe Chris Quinn, which Gilead did give money to. We don't know for sure. We're let, we have to protect ourselves. To nonprofits. Allegedly. No, 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 no. Gilead did give money to nonprofits like Gay Men of African Descent and others that Chris Quinn also no, supported. Okay. So we're all in bed. We're all giving money to the same people. But we don't know for sure. But we suspect. No, I was there. They received okay. grants from Gilead. Well, if you say so, far be it for me to yeah, argue. Yeah, she can with come you. try to sue me. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> so anyway, yeah, Chris, maybe you shouldn't try to run for mayor, honey. You maybe know? you should move somewhere <laughs> with your with your new marriage and your tax bracket and your tax break and stay there. Um, they say Mozambique is very nice this time yes, of year. You know. Um. So no, but um, just to protect ourselves legally. We are she not saying that Chris Quinn is a crook. We're just saying that we've heard other people I'm say that, that she is. I'm saying that she could be a crook and that the state attorney general should investigate. Who knows? Anyway, far be it from us to accuse anyone. But anyway, and I still think Gifford Miller was a lot prettier than Chris Quinn. I was so hot for him. I was crazy. I was crazy for that boy. But anyway, but enough about Gifford Miller. I never date a man who's less masculine than I am, so never mind. Anyway, so... I like that joke. I use it a lot. I was going to say you use it a lot, don't you? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> what are we talking about here? Trump, Trump, Trump. He's evil. He's evil. He's evil. He's evil. And I think he started to piss off most of the Republican establishment that controls Congress, starting with um, Paul Ryan. And not just piss off. I believe most of his ideology is too extreme for the Congress to sustain. And what I mean by sustain is a lot of the bums know that they will not, they'll get kicked out of office. They will get voted out or elected out in the next um, midterm election. And so those same Congress people afraid for their seats are now beginning to try to find a moderate place that's too moderate for Trump, Trump to stand. And they're going to end up butting heads with Trump ideologically and legislatively. What, are, what, what is he going to do to us? Like, is he going to like put us all in jail or something just for okay. being trans? Well, the, the top cop, as Nancy Pelosi referred to him yesterday, has the biggest cloud over him in terms of credibility and his ability to He's the one we said might be Jeff impeached Sessions. or fired so or something. He was so. our main threat. And Jeff as far Sessions. As I, Jeff Sessions. But, but the John Gore individual who is potentially the next civil rights head of the Department of Justice is still dangerous to us. And it is still technically possible for... Uh, sessions to appoint John Gore and then be removed himself and John Gore still remain in the Department of Justice. So we're not in the clear already. I will say that there, there are more, there's a bit more gloomy news to connect around to Jeff Sessions and his attacks on trans people since the Title IX protection rollback directive letter from Sessions 
tra three trans women have been murdered in Louisiana, wow. two in New Orleans. The day that Jeff Sessions was accused of targeting trans children and, and lambasted by the press for this, one of the either official responses or an off-the-cuff response of Sessions or the Justice Department was that they were going to continue to protect the rights of everybody, including transgender people, under the Matthew Shepard, James Byrd um, Hate Crime Prevention right. Act. And I believe that... Did he? No. Well... Well, we're at the point where we need to start demanding those investigations. Three trans women have been killed. The student issue, the student child that issue so sad. was last week, yes. But it forced him serendipitously to sort of make a, a statement about what he would do going forward that we need to hold him accountable to. Yeah. So since he said that he would use the Department of Justice to go after people that violate people's civil rights, including trans people, that the Department of Justice is there for everyone, mm -hmm. Um, I think he needs to go after those individuals and, and with the maximum. I also am just disturbed that the press keeps covering the increase in anti-Semitism linked to the White House and the attack specifically a shooting a week and a half ago against a Muslim, excuse me, Jewish, were they Jewish or mm -hmm. Muslim? Jewish uh, individuals in the Midwest. However, I think it's, they yeah, trans up. women of color are being murdered every day. Nobody covers it. Nobody covers it. And I and not even, not only is it not covered, the press right now seems to be in line demanding that the Department of Justice review this case as a violation of this these individual civil rights. And it's been stated that the Department of Justice is investigating this as a potential hate crime. They haven't even started investigating on the ground in Louisiana. So I just encourage... Everyone that might see this interview, it is up to all of us. The way the Department of Justice works in terms of them conducting investigations is they have a CRS, a Community Resource uh, Service Division, that responds to emergencies. And the only way that CRS, which is set up to serve as a liaison between community and law enforcement, the only way CRS gets involved is if we are demanding and we're outraged and we are taken to the streets and social media and writing our, our, our representatives. So trans people always think there's an organization or someone doing the work. You Diana, know, you know what you should do the work. I just want to make clear: you need to call your 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 congressperson uh, and Northrop, who's the co-host of Gay USA, was on this show. Oh, yeah, She's on YouTube. Right. You can that's see right. it. She said sometimes calling, believe it or not, yes, it makes more of an impression than emailing or writing a letter because they have to document. Right. Themselves. So and it's recorded as yeah. you're saying it. So although you'd think email would be too, but no. And Northrop said. Telephone these people, their offices. You won't talk to the legislator, right. but you'll talk to a member of his staff who will, and the call will be recorded as a matter of course. They record all the calls. Uh, I just want to shout out um, two other, as a connection and a, and a spinoff from Ooh. that, two other great ways to get involved that are besides trans rights, but in a, a Trump resistance movement, indivisible.org which is a, a platform started by an ex-Democratic intern from Congress who saw how Republicans obstructed President Obama for years yes. and took those tact tactics and canonized them in, a, in an online sort of how-to guide. Indivisible.com or indivisible.guide.com um, is taking off. It, it, when you sign on to indivisible.org or .com, it will show you how to target your specific legislator locally. Indivisi Indivisible's whole strategy is we shouldn't be overwhelmed by the process. Right. The easiest and most effective way to create change is to target your own legislator. So don't, going to other people's districts can cost time, money, and isn't effective. Staying in your district, linking up with other people that are interested in similar mm -hmm. issues, and doing small, what we call affinity actions, targeting Congress people is the best, most effective way. And the last thing is, for all our tech kids, there's an app called Five Calls that's available both in the Google Play Store and on iTunes. It's free. When you download the app by zip code, it will connect you to city council people, legislators of all levels of government, 
and help you both make specific calls and send emails, but all in line what we're talking about. I think um, five calls literally helps you make calls, but also connects you to lists of emails and other ways to communicate right. with your legislator, which is important. So five call app. Uh, for everybody with a smartphone, which is most of us, and indivisibleguide.org, and it might be .com, but I apologize. But Indivisible is really taking off. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is the White House is literally feeling the pressure because it's understanding that Congress or Congress people are going to refuse to be put in jeopardy because if it's outlandish ideas and right. it's discrimination. And our founding fathers... The pieces of shit, slave-holding bastards they were. Yeah. They created a system, though. And those checks and balances seem to begrudgingly be working. So we need amazingly, to work within the system. Even though he's Trump is a crazy fascist dictator, amazingly, this some great, checks and are working. This great experiment, as it was called, yes. is working out to be... The checks and balances are working. I still think that the Republicans stole Obama's oh, please, fucking of course. Supreme Court pick. And I think that if there were any universal, like, national weird spiritual karma, fuck the Republicans for all eternity for stealing Hello. Obama's yes. Supreme yes. Court pick, which was guaranteed b to him by the structure of the and Constitution. And he was a centrist. It was a shame. Anyway, oh boy, we're almost out of time. So if people want to contact you to talk to you about this and how they can become politically active, how do they do this? Um, I can be reached via email at Mariah for change, M-A-R-I-A-H, the number four, change, C-H-A-N-G-E, at gmail.com, Mariah for change at gmail.com. And uh, Daniel Williams, who is STAR's National Recruitment and Volunteer what Coordinator. What is STAR? STAR is... America and the world's oldest trans rights organization. Mm -hmm. Since 1971, yes. Founded technically during Stonewall, officially in 71. 71. By and Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson, among others. Others. And, and, I, and I feel like Stonewall is our, what is our birthday because if it weren't for Stonewall, it wouldn't have ignited the oh, fire in, so, in, in Sylvia that led We'd to... We'd be married hairdressers somewhere, exactly, you know? Exactly. We would. Married hairdressers. So anyway... Um, Not to each other, but you know what I mean. Girl, anything's possible. Well, so uh, this ain't Chris Quinn show. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, well, you uh, are. You have a sassy pixie cut. You know she had a sassy pixie cut for years. Yeah, I know, but... Please. If I had a face like hers, I'd shave my ass and walk backwards. Anyway, I'm Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. I love you. Chris Quinn, for those of you living in other parts of the country, is uh, a New York politician, well, a former politician, who is itching to get back. Who is an outspoken lesbian wannabe ally. We love lesbians people. on this show. We just don't like fake, allegedly crooked pretentious, lesbians. Allegedly what crooked. the hell does that old bitch have to be pretentious about? Get out of here. She's a bitch. Anyway, not... Alleg alleged bitch. Alleg I don't want to be She's sued. a bitch. She's an alleged bitch. She's a bitch. I love you even if no one else loves you. I love you even if you're Chris Quinn. Eh. But anyway, I love you. Jeff Gifford. Sessions. Gifford. Gifford Miller. Countdown. Mwah. Mwah. Love you all. Bye.